So in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn this into this, an awesome Netflix poster. Let me show you how. So let's start with the base image and then move our way up gradually. So first let's go to the Filmic RGB module. Those of you who follow me for a while now know that I go to the look tab and then add in 1.1. 40 contrast and that gives us more contrast in the image and that's the only thing i'm doing with the filmic rgb module because other than that it's much better to use other modules for that next effect so let's move on to the next one which is the lens correction module right because i want to make sure that everything is properly set and now it is so all you have to do is just activate it and you should be fine if there's any issues just let me know down below okay now this is my most favorite module which is the color balance rgb module and we're going to do quite a bit of work in this module First, let's go to masks and then make sure we select this, the color picker of the contrast gray fulcrum that selects the entire image. And now we can do the rest of the work in this module. Now, first let's click the four ways tab and there's all kinds of things we can change, right? We can change the luminance. So we've got the global offset. We can lift the shadows, drop the shadows. We can lift the highlights, drop the highlights and we can increase basically the midtones and we can decrease them, okay? Now, when I saw this image, I immediately thought of Ozark. It's a series I've seen on Netflix a couple of years ago, and I wanted to give it the same kind of eerie look. So in this case, that means that I need to introduce some blues into the image, but I also need to drop down the shadows. And the same goes for the highlights because they are pretty overexposed up here. And for the midtones, I want to change the hue as well into the blues again. And then in the master tab, this is where the other magic happens. Now, rather than just changing all these values around from the global ones, so the global chroma, global saturation, and global brilliance, I'm going to work on the shadows, midtones, and highlights individually. And in this case, that's to achieve the best effect. Now, for the saturation, I want the shadows to stand out because, like I said, this is going to get an eerie look. And then I'm going to drop the midtones. And I'm going to drop the highlights as well, which I'm going to give the same value as the midtones. And for the brilliance, I'm going to drop down the shadows. I'm going to increase the midtones to make them stand out. And I'm going to increase them quite a bit. And for the highlights, because I said they are overexposed, I'm just going to drop them down. Now let's look at it before and after real quick by activating and deactivating this module. And that already looks a lot better for what I want to achieve. Now, next up is the color calibration module. And by the way, if you wonder what all these modules are and how they work, I made separate videos about them. So be sure to check those out as well. So in this case, rather than working on the red, the green and the blue channels or the colorfulness, I am going to work on the brightness. I'm going to increase the greens to brighten the image quite a bit. I'm going to drop down the blues and the same for the reds. And now we are going to finish this image by going to the vignetting. And the whole reason for that is because I want the focus to be on the lake, right? And not so much on the rest of the image. And then if you paid attention to the snapshot I showed you, you will see why that is. Now, let me close this one down. And now we need to crop this. And this is a very, very important step in this editing process because the value that you see right here. So in my case, it's 6,048 by 3,402. Or in your case, maybe it's 9020 by 1080 or 1080 by 1080. You need to remember that value because you are going to need it in a moment. Then make sure you align it the way you want it to be aligned and then close it down for the module to be activated. Okay. Then as a final touch, I like to use the tone equalizer module because that will allow us to, you know, give this a little bit more pop. Now, if you hover over this image, you will see where the values are. Now, in this case, I want the lake to be more brighter and i want this to be more dark okay so once again brighten it up i think this is the sweet spot so let's close that one down and now we're going to use the local contrast module and i'm going very fast in this video but that's okay and rather than just you know activating it and moving around these values in this case i suggest just going to the preset menu click clarity and then for this image this is fine you can increase this if you want to even more maybe this looks even better Okay, let me close that one down. And now we are going to turn this into a Netflix poster by going to the watermark module. And now we need to activate this module and you see the standard watermark of dark table, right? And this one, you can change the alignment. You know, you can use these offset buttons to change this, but this is not what I want because I want the Netflix things. 
However, if you go up here, you won't see them, but you do have the ability to upload your own one. Now make sure it's an SVG file because all other versions don't work. So you can't upload a PNG here, right? With a transparent background. Let me show you mine. So let me click this one. There you go. Here we have the overlay. And this looks like a Netflix poster, right? But don't worry. I've got all the presets for you that you need because I made them in GIMP for you. And that means it's very easy to create that overlay, right? So what I did was I grabbed all of these things and I created groups. Now, if you don't have GIMP, you need to go to GIMP.org and then download it here. So this is the version 2.10.38. Download that one, install it in the designated folder and then just open it. And then what you can do is you can navigate to the folder where you've downloaded my preset then you will see the Wilbur logo. You can just double click on it and that will open up this project. Okay. Now to start a blank canvas, what you need to do is go to file new and then remember the values you saw in dark table and fill them up here. Then click up here, advanced options, background color, change it to transparency. Click OK. And your new canvas will be created. Then with this project selected that I've created for you, you can just drag and drop this. So let me show you real quick how that goes. So let me create another one. Background color, transparency, okay. Okay, so we've got two now. If you have your own, just go up here to my project and then just drag and drop them into this project. And you will see that you get all of these here and then you're able to just move them around anywhere in your image that you want to. If you want to rescale them because Yours is more narrow than this photo. Click the layer and then just click inside there and just scale it to any size that you want or require, right? Click scale, there you go. Now let's say you want to change something. So let's say because I uploaded all these icons for you. Now let's say you don't need the drugs one and you don't need the S word one. You can just click up here and you can activate or deactivate those layers, right? So in this case, I deactivated all of these. So that leaves us with these three. Now up here, you have the buttons. So you have the thumb that will, you know, show that you like it. Then we've got the add to list logo. And then this is the play button. Now, obviously you would probably need that, but I figured it's very easy if I just group them together for you. So it's easy to find. We've got the Netflix logo, which you can activate or deactivate. We've got the text logo. We're working on that in a minute. And then we've got the background, which is transparent in the backdrop now this is important because i'm using black because then everything is visible but once you export this make sure you deselect that layer now let's say you want to change the positions right of the logo because for whatever reason you can just click inside the logo and then just drag it anywhere you like using the move tool so that's a very important step to know as well because sometimes you want them on the bottom sometimes you want them up here and especially if your aspect ratio is changing, right? Due to the fact that your photo probably has different dimensions than my own photo. And then if you want to export it, go to file, export as, and then make sure you export it as a PNG. And you will have this transparency, which allows you to use this as an overlay on your photo, okay? Now, if you want to change the text, you will need to select the text layer, go up here, text tool, click inside the text, and then you can just anything you like, right? And that's very easy to change the text. Now, what I do recommend you doing is once you've got your designated text. So in this case, let me undo that. We've got the missing lake. The best thing to do is just right mouse button, then alpha to selection. Then go to select, grow, use three pixels, click OK. And that will give you a small outline, right? Then what you're going to do is click up here, new layer, and let's call this grow text. Then go up here to the color one and then select a color that's a little bit darker than white. Click OK, then go to edit, fill with foreground color or background color, depending on where you have that color selected, and then drag that layer under the text layer and then select none. That will make sure that this is better visible on your images without it looking weird once you use black because that just puts it off and then people will immediately know 
that it's all photoshopped but this is very subtle so you can get away with this right now once you're satisfied and once you've exported this image you need to go to conversio.co then upload the png that you've created in gimp and that will allow you to change it to an svg file then in Darktable for the watermark you have to save it in the folder that shows up once you hover over this word right and once you've done that you can just click up here but in my case i suggest because i had some issues with this to just close down your dark table and then reopen it and then add in the watermark and that should be fine and that my friends is how you create a netflix poster of any photo that you own i hope you guys like it let me know down below and i'll see you guys next time Doei.